given unto us to come together once again. We gather here in the great name of Jesus. Yes. That name that is above every name. Mm -hmm. Oh, gracious Father, how great is thy name oh, in all yes. the earth. This is the name, Father, that you gave unto your son Jesus as you have highly exalted him and given him this name that is above every name. Yes. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Yes. Oh, that we would understand the value of the name. Yes. Thank you, Father. Such knowledge comes from you. Yes. This is not something that we can just pick up off the street. Yes. But the revelation, knowledge of the name of Jesus must be revealed unto us, Father. Yes. And I pray, I pray, I pray for this people that there be a revealing of the value of the name of Jesus yes, unto your people, Father. Oh, that we can hear it mm -hmm. and operate at that level. Oh, yes. Thank you for that, Father. We're moving forward Glory. in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, be seated. Praise God forevermore. Thank God for his son, Jesus. Thank God for you. Welcome. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm excited. I, I know you are as well. I'm excited about all that, all what God is doing and what he's doing in my life. Wait a minute, I'm, I'm, in my life I am. Amen. You know, I'm, I'm living the best life I've ever lived since I've been on the earth. Amen. I am. I am. It's the life of God. It's the Amen. kind of life that God's given to me. And I'm, it's, 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 I'm, I'm expanding. It's, it is expanding me more and more every day. As we press forward. Turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 and the 7th verse. And here's the reading of that text. Read Ephesians 1 7. In him we have redemption. Through his blood. We have the forgiveness of sins. And it's according to the riches of his grace. In him, in Christ, we have redemption through his blood. We have, what is this? What, what do we have? Do we understand what we have? Do we understand is it, is it just as something we read? Or do we really understand what, what it, is it the truth? Do we have something? What is it that we have? You know, and I think that's a valid question. You may say, well, what do you mean, John? Well, you need to look at it, you know, because this is the Word of God, and the Word of God is not like anything else. He says that in Christ we have redemption. Now, we examine that term redemption, and we found out, you know, it's, a, it's really not a complicated word. Uh, redemption is the act of redeeming or the condition of having been redeemed. It's not complicated. It also means the recovery of something pawned or mortgaged. It's the payment of an obligation as a government pay, government's payment of the value of its bonds. It's deliverance upon payment of ransom. All that's redemption. That's what redemption is. It's, it's, it's deliverance upon payment of ransom or rescue. Now, now, is there a payment? Has there been a payment? Of course. We say that. Uh, do we say it just superficially out of our heads because we know it, you know, from a natural standpoint? Or do we understand what it really means? See, you, you, there, there come a time when you really have to, you just can't just read the Bible. And this is, I want, I want us to get this. That, that we just got to do more than just read it. Well, yeah, I read you. Read you. I read it. Okay. What did, it do, what, did it do anything for you? But if, but if you read it and nothing is happening and it doesn't do anything for you, maybe you didn't read it. You know, you can call word. Did you know the Bible talks about the letter and it talks about the spirit? Did you know that? There is a difference in the letter and in the spirit. Amen. An, 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 an intellectual unbeliever can read words probably better than you or I can, with more emphasis. Wow. You yeah. ever see actors? That's what they are. They're actors. You know. 
Well, 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 well you got to, there is a, there is, there's more than just reading and hearing. There's more than just, just that. Mm. You know, Jesus said it this way. He said, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. Well, they all had ears on the head. So what's he talking about? He just has ears to hear. Well, if you just hear that, you, you just hear those words, you know, what, 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 what's, what's with that? Everybody got ears. Yeah. But everybody doesn't have ears to hear. Everybody don't have ears to hear. He that will give himself to what I'm saying and give himself until he hear what is being said. You can't, this is, these are not the ears that he's talking about. These flaps on the side of your head. That's not what he's talking about. He is talking about, he is talking about the ears of your heart. He said, oh, I didn't know my heart had ears. You see, well, see, always can learn something. No, well, when, well, when we say heart, we're not talking about the blood pump. There's another surprise for you. Well, what if you're not talking about what's the, what's the heart? What are you talking about? You know, your spirit, the core of your being, the very center of you, the core of you, the heart, the spirit of man, the, the inward man, if you will, the man on the inside, or the new man. If any man be in Christ, he is a new. Oh, yeah. Now, did you know there's a difference between a new man and a refurbished man? Mm -hmm. Now, I was, I was meditating this this afternoon in my office there, and I thought, I said, you know, I think that we got a lot of secondhand refurbished people that think they're new. There's a difference in, in second refurbished and new, you know. But I thought, and, and now here's why I th here's why I come to that conclusion, because I'm always my, I'm always at this. I'm always at this. That's what I do. I'm 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 thinking now. I, I know a new creature in Christ. Old things have passed away, because God said so. But but when I but when I look at people, and people that are supposed to be new. But I'm, what I'm thinking is, maybe they may not be new. Maybe they're refurbished. A refurbished man and a new man are not the same. A refurbished man, may, he may superficially do these things that the Bible talks about, but, but there is no real connection there. Now, James said it this way. He said, be doers of the word, not hearers only. The only one that can do the word is a new man, a man that has been redeemed. But a refurbished guy can project doing it, but he, won't, but he, can, he, can, he can hear it, but he can't do it. And, and you can look, you got to look real, real, real close to see sometimes. Now, Jesus identified it this way. He said, in that day, they're going to be, the refurbished are going to come up, and they're going to be hollering, they're going to be saying, Lord, Lord, didn't we do all that you told me to do? And he said, I'm going to tell them refurbished bunch to get away from me. That's the essence of it. Come on, that's the truth. In that day, they'll say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this? Didn't we cast out devils? Didn't we do this? Didn't we do that and the other? And he'll say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. You was never a new man. You was refurbished. You, got my, you read my word verbally. You got a hold to the letter, and you thought you had it. You wouldn't stay with me long enough to get it. You thought you had it, and you went and acted it out. I say that when I look at the church because, see, I know, I know what the Bible will produce. Because I'm experiencing what the Bible will produce. I'm experiencing it in my life. But then when I start, when I start interacting, when I start looking at the church in general, I see a lot that's missing. And I'm like, well, I don't think God has no more, give me no more favor than he does anybody else. 
Why am I not seeing what I'm supposed to see? Why am I not seeing an excitement about the things of God? Why are people <coughs> running away? Why do we have so many empty seats? Are you still here? Something is wrong. Either, either I missed it by putting all the seats here. Maybe I should have never put them all here. Maybe I should have just put 10 seats out there. Or somebody else missed it. By not, one of us, somebody missed it. Somebody missed it. Because I know God don't spend money for nothing. I, I would I would have loved to have I, if they had a, when they sent me the bill for all of these seats. I wish they had been just a bill for ten seats. If it had been a bill for ten seats, dear Lord, oh man! But I didn't get a bill for ten seats. I got a bill for all of these seats. Yeah. What are you gonna do with them? Anybody gonna sit in them? Maybe I missed it. Did I miss it? No. I don't think so. No. What am I saying here? I'm saying that that maybe maybe just maybe. Now, why do I say it? I say it to make us think. And for the church to think. Because if you don't think, if you don't, if you don't do any self-evaluation, you can think you have something that you don't have. Because the reality of the kingdom causes one to excel. Number one, there is an excitement inside of you that's just amazing. Wow. There's a desire to reproduce yourself in others that's, uh, that's phenomenal. You're just like Jesus. He, he was constantly reaching. The apostles got the same, had the same vision. They're constantly going. I mean, Jesus, the guy was, they was going so much that the Bible said, but at one place the Bible said they didn't even hardly have time to eat. Man, these guys, is, these guys, there's, there's a, there's an understanding, there's a value here that I'm missing in my generation. At least in this hour, I'm missing it. What is it? Well, you, should, you picked up the wrong box of balls. You picked up a box of refurbished balls. Should have got a box of new ones. Because they look almost alike, but they're not. They're different. New car and a used car are different. <laughs> different cars. Yeah, the value of them is different. The performance is different. Everything is different. You see? You follow what I'm saying? Now I, I say this because when I look when I look at the scriptures, I look at the scriptures, and I see one thing, and I look and I see something else. Yeah. Now, for an example, let's let's. You can handle this, right? Amen. You won't leave on me. You won't walk out on me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> As if it's going to bother me. Ha! <laughs> ha! No. Let's look, at, let's look at the Word of God. I'm, this is a basic. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at God's Word. Mm -hmm. This, this is Psalms 9 and 1, uh, stanza number 2. This I declare about the Lord. This is the word of God. This is the word of God. What are you saying about the word? What, what about the Lord? What do you He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He alone. He alone. He, no, nobody else, not me, not you, nobody else is my safety place. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. Mm -hmm. Psalms 91, NLT style. Verse 2. Put it on the board. I want this to be seen. Jesus says, don't let the word depart from your eyes. Keep it before your eyes. Yeah. Number 2. This I declare about the Lord. What are you declaring? What do you say? He alone, he alone is my refuge. Wait a minute, wait a minute. 
Is, is that what you're saying? Is that what we, is that, are we saying that? Is, that? is that for us to say? Of course it is. It's not a trick question. Amen. Amen. He alone is my... Now, now here's, the, here's, the big, here's the big question. Do you believe that? It's going, to get, it's going to get tighter yet. Watch, just watch this. It's going to get tighter. Do you believe that? Do we believe that? Does the church believe that? Why should I read a Bible that I don't believe and that I don't live? I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Because, because when I look at that, and I, and I was reading this, and I, I, didn't, I, I didn't know this. I was looking at it, and I saw it, and I'm like, you, you know, you need to keep reading the Bible. Every time you, you need to keep reading it. Don't stop reading it just because you think you know what it says. You don't know. And I said, I said, we don't believe that. He alone not him, Jesus, the government, me, and everybody else I can find is my safe place. No, the Bible didn't say that. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. Now, I, I say that, and I, I was looking at it because we are in the middle of an era now. Everybody is looking for a safe place. Everybody looking for a safe place. And they're fighting and getting mad over a safe environment, including... Those people that dress up Sunday morning and go down to the church. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. And I thought about it, and that's when God said, well, maybe, they, maybe they're not new. Maybe they're refurbished. Are you a refurbished one? Because if you're a refurbished one, you won't believe that. That's okay for that's okay for Sunday morning for Bible reading. But when it comes to my everyday living, hmm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take care of me, boy. I'm gonna take care of me. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna use some sense. Are you here? Are you? Are we, you are we getting the message right? Amen. You got the message. No, 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 no. The word of God, unbelief, is doesn't mean a thing. It, all it is is religion. And religion won't take you halfway down the street. Religion won't take, do nothing for you. Reli you can have religion and you'll be just as full of anxiety. You'll, just be, you'll be just as mad. You'll be just as sick. You'll be just as frustrated as the world. Just being religious doesn't do anything for you. Amen. But being a new creature in Christ does do something for you. A new creature... Knowing and understanding that you have been redeemed mm -hmm. makes a difference Amen. in the way you live. The word of God makes a difference in the believer. Amen. See, that's what we are, believers, but, but look, and are we believing? Mm -hmm. Now, if nobody never challenges you, you want to, you'll just keep doing the same thing over and over and over and just keep living in fear, frustrations, and madness, and anger, and everything else that goes with the world, and you won't know if nobody challenged you. Amen. I challenge me, so you know I have a problem challenging you. Amen. Yeah, are you. Are you still here? Yeah. Because, it, because it, listen, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to raise the bar. I'm looking to raise the bar. Mm -hmm. I'm destined to be conformed to, to the image of Jesus. I'm destined to look, act, and talk just like Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm destined for that. And if I back off, that's because my flesh can't handle it, dear God, I'll never make it. Your flesh can't talk like this. 
your flesh won't act. Won't, your flesh don't want to. Don't don't don't. don't all, all your flesh will do. All your flesh will do is read that and go on about its business and do what it always ever did do. That's all your flesh is going to do. Yours, mine, and everybody else is going to do the same. Amen. But I thought God told me don't live in the flesh. Amen. He told me to live in the spirit. And living in the spirit means I believe what God says and I do what God says. And I say, watch this. Say, say if, if you if you say you read a if you read a statement like that. Now watch this. If you read a statement like that, get mad about it and continue to protect your arrogance. You will never grow. That's what people do. That's what Christians do. Christians protect. Rather than growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, they protect their unbelief. Oh, I listen, I know I've been there, done that, I've been there, I know what it is, I know how people, I know, I know, I know. No, stop protecting your unbelief and your fears and your frustrations and acknowledge and humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and allow the power, see the, see, a refurbished believer can't believe that. Amen. He can't. But faith in God, yeah. a genuine heart that has chosen to believe God. Yeah. First, see, 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 there's one word that follows the reading of the word of God. It's amen. Yeah. There is no yes buts behind God's word. And oh, how many yes buts have I heard? Yeah, but. I walk right away from you. As soon as I hear that, I'm gone. I'm done. Because you are, you are a flesh protector. The minute you say, yes, but, you are protecting your arrogance and your unbelief. And I can't do a thing for you. And God can't do anything for you either. You got to, you got to, listen, when you come to God, you come open and naked knowing nothing. God, I'm totally open, yielded, and surrendered unto you. I know nothing. I need help. That, my friend, will open up the windows of revelation unto your heart. But as long as you're protecting your arrogance and your unbelief, you are going nowhere, I can assure you. God's word is true, Amen. and it's not going to change for you. I don't care what culture. See, the culture that we live in has trained us this way. Mm -hmm. See, see the, did, you know, did you know the world has developed to a point, it tries to make us think that they like God? Mm -hmm. They don't like him. The world hates Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus told us that before he left. He said, they hated me, they're going to hate you. I don't care how they talk. I don't care how smooth they are. They don't like you. The world does not like you. If you name the name of Jesus Christ, Satan does not, he don't like you. He really doesn't like you. He really doesn't. Will he pretend that he like you in order to deceive you? Of course he will. It's kind of like a guy taking a young lady out, you know, and he has ulterior motives. Mm -hmm. He'll tell her anything. You know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. But he's not genuine. He has ulterior motives. Well, the well where do you think he got this from? He got it from the devil. Uh -huh. <coughs> the devil does the church the same way. He tells the church, in fact, you've probably seen this sign somewhere. I saw it on a commercial. Oh, we're all in this together. Anybody heard that one? Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm not in nothing together with the devil. Nothing. Because he doesn't like me, and my motives and his motives are different. Are you, are you, still, here? Are you still here? And see, that's how we get sucked in. 
This is how the church has been sucked in. This is why there has been so much damage done to the church in the past six months. Because we've been sucked in so close to the world, you can't tell the difference between us. And we don't even know it. And we're acting just like the world. As if though that 91st Psalm is not even written. And it's a crying born shame. I refuse. I refuse to go with it. Now, I, you know, I listen. I am not bucking for popularity. I'm not. I didn't. I wasn't called to. Pop, to I wasn't called for that. I, do I want? I want to help as many people as I can, but I will not compromise one word of God's for anybody's popularity. I'm, I'm not. I'm just can't do it. Can't do it, cause I know what Jesus did for me. Man, it was when Jesus was and when he was agonizing in that garden. I mean, it was messy. It was messy in Gethsemane. It was messy, and Jesus is agonizing, but he did not compromise. He did not compromise. He stood. I mean, there was pressure on them. I, I have no, I have no, I have no identification with that much pressure where your sweats like drops of blood falling from your brow. I, 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 I don't have no identification with that. But that's where he was. The pressure to give in to what lie ahead of him. He wouldn't do. Now you would think even after you would think even after he was raised from the dead mm -hmm. you would think that the devil would just go away. No. 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 All that he encountered down through his ministry. Mm -hmm. And the devil went from one thing to the next. I mean, he, I mean you remember, remember when Jesus launched his ministry and he was out there when he was baptized? Yes. Remember when he came up out of the water? Wh who's standing there? Oh, you know who? Jumped all over him. Mm -hmm. Trying to get him to compromise. That whole deal. And you and watch what look at what look at this. Look at what he used. Scripture. There are so many Christians been hoodwinked and lied to by the devil, and the devil is doing the same tricks. And I'm like, can't you all see what he's been doing? And the devil have driven people into almost depression using the scriptures, even as we speak. No different. Do you know what was used? You know that the, the testimony against Jesus to crucify him? Do you know what it was? Go back and read it. I'll tell you what it is. You can read it for yourself. The scriptures. The scriptures. The devil used the scriptures to crucify Jesus. What did the priest say? The high priest said, Ah, oh, that's it. He blasphemed. He was, a, he was accused of blasphemy. He was accused of going against God's word. And said, Crucify him. Well, listen, come on. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the devil is not going to use the scriptures anymore to, to, to defeat the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course he is. That's what he's doing. And he's got people hoodwinked to that fact. Right now. Right now as we speak. Oh, you got to do this. You got to do this. Yeah, the letter will kill you. Spirit gives life. You don't, you don't even know what the Bible says. You don't even know. Um, it's obvious, down through the scriptures, down through the ages, it's proven. It's proven. You don't even know what it says. 
You can only know what it says by the Spirit of God. Yeah. Are, you, are, you, are, you, are you still here? I say this because it's the, it's the, it's the I mean, I mean, average Christian could read Ephesians 1, 7, and say, oh, yeah, I know what it says. Oh, you think you do. No. No, there's power. There's enough power here to save wherever you are. In him we have redemption. Mm -hmm. We have it. I'm a new man, not a refurbished one. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. I am a new creation. The scripture confirms that. Now, see, see, the power to change you is in the word. Got to know it. The power. You can't change you. You know, people think that. They are, you know, have you ever invited someone to, to church or whatever, and they tell you, see, they're going to come as soon as they get straight? Yeah. As soon as they, you know, get it together. Soon as I, soon as I get it, soon as I, soon as I get straightened out. That's what they say. As soon as I get straightened out. And, and many times, and that's exactly what happens. It's, 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 it's an excuse from the devil. And they stay right there until they really get straightened out. To somebody straighten them out nice and stiff. And there they are straightened right out in front of the church. Well, they said it was coming soon as they got straight. They're straight now. And we take them in one in the church like they've been going all the time. <laughs> and I'm not interested in bringing you in here if you haven't come on your own. I told a lady that one time. He said, you did? I, yes, I did. And she was in full agreement with me. This was years ago. You don't know who I'm talking about, so it don't matter. It don't matter. Her husband, I don't never say, I never seen a husband, never seen him in church. Never seen him. Now, she was all right. Never seen him in church. And he died. Mm -hmm. And, of course, everybody expecting me to, to, bring him to bring him to church and bury him. And I told his wife, and I pulled up to his eyes, I said, listen. And I called his name. I said, you know, he didn't go to church when he was living. I said, you know, I said, he's going against his will to take. And she said, you know what? I said, you know, you're right. <laughs> and we didn't bring him either. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't bring him. I went around that film. We had the film right there in the film home. What are you going to bring him for now? What are you going to bring him to the church for now? He didn't, well, he didn't walk in here. Why am I going to roll him in here? But it's the truth. Yes, sir. Yes. You know, and, and, and she was in great agreement with me. Yes. Yeah, she's because I told her, I told her. She, well, see, here's again, when you know people, you know, they know your heart, they know you yes. mean well. You know what I mean? But she said, you know what? She said, you know, you're pastor, you know, you're right. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, the big guess is well to bring him to church. He didn't want to come when he was living. Why do you want to make him go now? <laughs> yeah, go take him. No, no. No, 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 but no, but that, but that, but that's, that, this is the real. This is, you have to want the things of God, and but the, the the power in the Word of God will feed you what you want. Now, Hebrews four twelve. Place it up. Hebrews four twelve. For the word of God is what? Living. It's what? Powerful. Well, you got to believe that. It's alive. It's alive and it's full of power. The word of God, it is alive and it is full of power. Now, what's going to happen when that living, powerful word get down into your spirit? It's going to transform you. That is the only thing that can change you for the better. You can't look up and see you wrong and change you. Now, I don't know why people got it from, but they have the idea that they can do that. You can't do anything. You mean you was mean when you got you. You're going to be mean when you leave if you don't get the word of God inside of you. You can't help it. You just mean. But you need to, but you, but you see, you can't change you. But God knew that. God knew it was mean. He knew it was mean and hateful. So he placed something, the only thing on this earth that can transform you and change you and redeem you is the word of God. 
For the word of God is living, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. That's the only thing that can get down in there to the core of your being and transform you. <sighs> Have you ever seen a person that's really mean and get, get born again? Like, like night and day. You want to see that? I've seen it. Well, you ought to have seen it. You saw yourself. <laughs> you think I think I think you was like that all your life? You got to be kidding me. No, but the word of God, the word of God, is the only thing that can do that. Faith come by hearing, hearing the word of God, and then God tells us His instruction us us provided for us over in Proverbs four. He says, "My son, now attend to my words." Incline your ears unto my sayings. Let not my words depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Why? For my words are life unto those that find them. And my words are health to all their flesh. Your health is not down at Shop Right Aid. It's, in the, it's ready. You got it in your lap there. God said that. I took him at his word. I believed it. And I started feeding on the word of God. I'm just as healthy, dear Lord. I'm just as healthy as I am. I'm healthy. I am. I'm healthy, boy. How did I get like this? The word of God made me healthy like this. The word of God. I'm healthier than I was when I was younger. I am. I'd have, I'd have sickly and can't just have, have some of this and some of that. And, you know, I don't do that stuff. I found out I don't have to have that stuff. No, indeed. No, indeed. That, the word, and, and watch this. The Word did it. The Word did it. The Word did it. You know how the Word works in the, in, the, in, the, in the human spirit? The Word works in this human spirit the same way gas works in your car. If you drive along and you got no gas, you're going to stop. But if you fill up, fill up your tank with gas, guess what? The car going to just run. It's just going to just run. It's got what it needs. It's going to run. It's going to run. You don't have to get out and make it. It's going to work because you have gas. The Word of God fuels the human spirit. Not only do you live, but you live abundantly. You live in abundance. Abundantly. The Word of God. Well, that's the result of being redeemed. Redeemed. In Him we have redemption. Now, notice the language that God used it. He didn't say, you have to get this. You know, like, like we, you know, we always, we talk that way, you know, I got to do this, I got to do this, I'm trying to do this. I, no, no, no. Change the verbiage of your language. Change, change the way you talk. You're not trying to get anything. You have. No, you have it. No, in him we have redemption. Did you say, he said, did he say you're trying to get it? No. You, okay, watch this. The scriptures infer this all throughout the scriptures. What does the thief come to do? And destroy. There's no question about it. He, he comes to steal from you. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How can he steal something that you don't have? Think. Come on. How many bank robbers go to empty banks? I don't think they rob banks anymore. Back in the day they did, but I don't think they do that anymore. But even when they was robbing banks, they never went to an empty bank. They always want to find a find a nice fat one when the when the payroll just come in. They didn't wait to they didn't wait for the for the for after the payday and then all of the Merchants have come and took the money out and went and paid the people. They didn't wait for that. There wasn't nothing, wasn't nothing there to steal. But the payroll come in. Oh, the payroll come in. The train just brought the payroll in. And the thieves come to what? Steal because they know the money is there. The devil know that you have redemption. He comes to steal it from you. But if you're walking around talking about you trying to get redeemed and talking about what you're trying to get healed and you're trying to get blessed and you're trying to get, then, then you're the, one, the only one that don't know you don't have it. Amen. Jesus knows you have it. God knows it. The angels know it. The devil knows it. 
And you're the only one don't know you don't have it. You're the only one don't know you have it. You're the only one don't know. Well, well listen, how many times? You may have done it today yourself. I don't know. Complain about this. I, I got this, and I got that, and, and this is hurting, and, and addy, yaggy, yaggy, and I need some of this, and, and I need some of that. And, and it sounds wonderful, but it's unbelief. All right? Turn over to turn over to Second Peter. Second Peter. See, see, because see, these the principles of, of redemption, they are, oh, the things of God is so simple. I dear God, the more I live with God, the more I see how simple the life that the abundant life is. It's really simple. We're the one that's been ignorant. You know, because well, we couldn't help it. We were trained by the devil. No wonder we were in such bad shape. The devil had a hold to us all our lives. And then God came and redeemed us and brought us home. And we still think the devil got us. Amen. It's the truth. Whether you say amen or not, I know it's the truth. That's why we act the way we do, because you think the devil still got you. No, you have, in him we have redemption. Not trying to get redeemed. We have it. Now, 2 Peter, mm -hmm. chapter number 1, and let me read the third verse of that, first, of, that, of that first chapter there. As his God's divine power has, I told you you got to get your verbs right, you got to get your tenses right. Mm -hmm. Has done what? Given to us what? Whoa, 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 stop. Whoa. Has given to us what? Oh, how many? Well, then what else is there? Nothing. Has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Now watch this. What in the world could you possibly want that does not pertain to life and godliness? What is it? You can't think of anything. There is nothing that you could possibly desire or want that does not pertain to life and godliness. Because everything that pertains to life and godliness has already been what? Don't you see how you cannot, a refurbished man, he can't say that. He, he don't understand that. He's not new, but he's refurbished. And so he's he going to say, well, I'll believe it when I see it. You see that? See what I'm talking about? You see the difference in re being refurbished and being born again, being redeemed? He's refurbished. And he's not gonna, I'm not going to say I have something I don't have. Maybe you never heard no stupid talk like that, but you know it's around. What you mean? No, you better use some wisdom. What wisdom are you talking about? Which one? You mean more than one? You see what I mean? No, come on. See, 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 when God says for us, attend to his word, he really means that. Because as brilliant as you are, you don't know what to say. You ever, you ever, you ever, you ever go with somebody or pick someone with you somewhere and you tell them, say, I'll do the talking? Because you know they're going to say the wrong thing? Listen, let God do the talking. Don't, don't, don't say nothing. Because whatever you are and whatever you have, listen, I'm going to tell you that right now, this may, not, this may hurt your feelings, but wherever you are and whatever you have is the result of your mouth. And if you don't change your mouth, you, nothing will get changed with your life. Nothing will change with you. You're mad today, you're going to be mad tomorrow if you don't get that mouth changed. No, come on, that's the truth. The mouth is, 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 is the result of all of, 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 of the total you, your mouth is. Whatever, whatever you have, Whatever, whatever you have, whatever you are, mm -hmm. it's all the product of your mouth. The wife that you are married to, the husband that you are married to, is the product of your mouth. Had you never said a word, you would never be married to him. The clothing that you are wearing is a product of your mouth. J.C. Penney did not make you buy that shirt. Pants, whatever you got on. You went and bought it. You did it. And now you're wearing it. 
So don't tell me you don't like it. You bought it. <laughs> now, come on. You know, everything, you know what I mean? You, you're the, you, your mouth, I'm trying to help us with that. Yeah. When we understand that principle, we'll shut up. I, I used to teach people this, and it's the truth. And you know, I, still, I still teach it. Mm -hmm. but, the, but when you get born again, the first task is to shut up. Until you find out what to say. Because when you, you know, you know, you know when you get born again, you know, you're really a mess. I, I've, I've seen it. I mean, I see people coming, they are a mess, boy. Their mouth got them there. Shut up. Don't say nothing. When you finish acknowledging Jesus Christ as Lord, shut up until somebody tell you what else to say. Because all that you are, your life, your possessions, all the, is the sum total of your words. Amen. Good, bad, or indifferent. The clothes you wear, the car you drive, the spouse you're married to, everything you own, the job you have is all results of your words. And so God is saying, listen to me, children. Attend to my word, and don't you say anything except what I say. God says that his divine power has given to us all things. Now, my words must rally around what God has said. If I'm hollering and telling you how sick I am and telling you how broke I am and telling you how frustrated I am and telling you how mad I am, you are not helping your situation. You are driving yourself deeper into it because you can only be what your mouth say. Now, we, 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 we taught these principles, and we've been teaching these principles ongoing, but people forget. See, that's why we're going back through that CTP. And everybody's going to do it. Because we don't forget, we've forgotten. We've forgotten some of the basic principles yeah. of victorious living. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've, actually, we've actually forgotten them, and we've drifted back into the flesh, and people are saying everything and doing everything. And doing what, dear God? Oh, my, I think I'm one of them. What do you believe in? And they say, say, I'm in faith. No, you're not. You're in unbelief. I can tell. I, don't have to, I, I do not have to ask you if you're in faith. Amen. If I stay with you about two minutes, I'll know exactly where you are. Because whatever you are is going to ooze out of you. He said, what else, can, what else can come out of you but what's in you? And if unbelief is inside of you, unbelief is coming out of you. That's the truth. No, we, our, our manner of speech must be in line with the word of God. That's why God tells us, he didn't say, I'm going to redeem you. He said, in him we have redemption. So you should be talking and acting like a redeemed person. Ah, oh, yeah. oh, glory to God. Preach myself happy. But that's the truth. I should be acting like I'm healed. Yeah. I'm not going to creep around and wait for you to ask me what's wrong with me. <laughs> no, 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 I'm telling you. No, no, no. See, I know this sounds like, oh, boy, he's so mean. No, I'm not. I'm not mean. I love you enough to tell you the truth. Amen. Because Patting you on the head saying, poor thing, is going to drive you deeper into where you are. Yes, but bless God when you rise up and say, bless God, I'm done with this. I'm not going to live like this anymore. I will walk in divine health because God purchased it for me, and that's part of my redemptive package. And I'll have nothing less. God told me I was redeemed. God didn't tell me I was sick. God didn't tell me I was broke. God didn't tell me I was mad and mean. God told me I'm redeemed. Yes. I have redemption. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And 
That's what I'll say. Amen. Now watch this, dear friends. When you hear this enough to start saying it, then you are in position for things to start changing for you. I didn't say things were going to change. I said you are in position. Mm -hmm. When you come to understand my mouth must align with the word. And then you position yourself and allow your mouth to align with what God has said about your redemption. Now you're in position to change. Amen. Now from this point, you're going to grow. You say, how long is it going to take? Okay, you see that flower? It wasn't big like that one time. But it's a pretty good sized flower now. And it's probably going to get bigger if we keep watering it and feeding it. But you can sit there and stay all night long. You'll never see it move. I say that to keep you out, keep you out the mirror. Because you're going to be saying, well, I, I'm, I'm doing what Pastor said, and I don't see no change. You're not going to see it like that, honey. After you walk in this two, three years, then you look back and you'll see where you were and you can see where you are. I'm telling you, where, you, you mean the death slow? I didn't set the system up. <laughs> God's idea is to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I don't know where we got the idea from that we're going to quote one verse and all of a sudden become a giant. It's not going to happen that way. It doesn't have to happen that way. I got a great grand that was born two weeks ago. Just about two weeks ago. She looked just like she did the day she came from the hospital. I don't see no difference in her. But they tell me she weigh more. I don't know. I take them at the word. You know what I mean? But she don't look no different to me. And they've been feeding every day. My, my point is, now I figure now probably next year this time, she's going to look much different from what she did the day she came home from the hospital. Do you understand the principles of growth? I don't know the Christians. We think, we, we think God's going to change the system for us. No, 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 no. You're going to grow at the same rate everybody else grows. If you align yourself with the word of God. If you don't align with a redeemed person, then you're not even going to see anything. If all you're doing is griping and groaning and complaining and moaning, that's all, you, that's all you're going to see. You're never going to see no growth. You're never going to see any change. But if you accept the word of God and believe who God said you are and make a decision that I'm going to believe God, I refuse to not, do, I, I choose to believe God's word. And my action is going to be in line with believing the word. And then you set out to do that. And over a period of time. I've been at this for a couple of years. I'm, I'm, I'm 75 now. I've been at this a couple of years. And I, I'm, I'm, seeing some, I'm seeing a little change here and there. You say, what? <laughs> Physical growth. And spiritual growth, the principles are identically the same. You feed the human body physical food, and it will grow. You feed the spirit, the word of God, and you will grow. This, it's the same principle. You're not going to read one scripture tonight. You're not going to come to one meeting tonight. And all of a sudden, tomorrow, you're going to be casting out devils. You're going to be running just as fast as you was when you came in here tonight. But if you stay with it, if you stay with it, that's why God said, continue in my word. What did he say? He who looks into the perfect law of liberty and does what? Continue therein. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a what? Doer of the word. This one will be blessed in what he does. Amen. And I believe that that's, what, that's how the devil has tricked many believers. I've seen people come into this church. I've seen them come in here and catch fire, and they burn for about two weeks. <laughs> well, I'll give them a little more than two weeks. But I've seen them. I've seen them come in here. Man, they come in here and catch fire. Ah, boy, ah, glad to get to work, glad to get to work. And spit and jerk for a couple of days. 
And all of a sudden I said, you know, what happened to so-and-so? I don't know. Can't find him. Can't even get him out on the phone. Let me tell you something. The devil hates places like this. And he's going to get you out of here as fast as he can. I'm telling you that right now. I, listen, listen. We're celebrating 30 years, this, 30 years of ministry this year. 30 years. I mean, after, after 30 years, you've seen some stuff. I've been here from scratch. I'm I'll, 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 I'll day one. Amen. We launched this ministry in my basement, and I've seen, I've seen, I've seen a lot. I've seen, if you care, I've seen. It's interesting how people come in and they think you did the first one you've seen. Dear God, I've, been, I've seen you so many times. <laughs> your, who do you think you conning? Well, Pastor, okay. But I've seen you. Amen. You know, like people go in court, and they think they're the first case the judge ever had. That judge dealing with people every day like you, coming there trying to con him. What do you think? Wait, what do you think you go there and tell a lie and get away with it? But people, they do it. They do it. They do it. They do it. You know, the judge does his business. Dealing with criminals. They come in his court and tell lies. And, they, and everybody go in and they think they're the first one. No, come to the realization, listen, I need to do this to God's way. I, I'm sent to tell you. I'm sent to teach you. I'm sent to develop you. I'm sent to disciple you. That's what I'm sent to do. And my desire is to be faithful to the calling that God has placed on my life. And I want you to excel and be all that God's called you to be. But there's not, it's not going to happen without the Word of God. It's going to be a constant consistency, giving yourself to what God's Word says, and take and learn to believe what yes. God says. Take God in His Word. There's many times that God, the Word of God will speak, and it just won't feel right trying to do it. But God said, you got to do what I said. Be doers of the Word. James says, be doers of the Word. And it just don't, it won't feel right. It's like, well, what difference does that make? It makes a lot of difference. The things of God is of the Spirit, and you can't see them. But if you do the right thing by the Spirit, it will manifest over here in the natural world where you live. You know, like becoming a giver makes no sense in the natural. Dear God, I need some money. We mean give you some. I need some money. Well, if you want to, if you want to receive something, then give. What do you mean give? Are you? And then people listen to the devil and become a tightwad, and they never go anywhere. They stay, stay a tightwad. But if you want to get, if you want to get free financially, become a giver. I, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. If you want to become financially independent, become a giver. Become a giver. Become a giver. Become a giver. You give God your tithes and your offerings and you give people. Just give. Give of yourself. Give. Be a giver. And you will end up with more than you can spend. I'm not telling you something I heard about. I've been at this long enough to get some results from it. Amen. And I found out. When we opened this ministry up 30 years ago, and I launched it, we set, I set up the ministry, and, 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 and the, when I opened up a bank account, when I incorporated Harmony Ministries, and I opened a bank account, and the first money that went into the Harmony Ministries bank account was my tithe money. No wonder we never had a financial meltdown. Because this, the initial seed was honoring God. Amen. The initial seed, yes. the first seed of this ministry was tithe money. Mine. It went into that bank account. It opened that bank account. The only thing this ministry can ever do is excel because it has the proper seed. And, and from day one, we have never had a financial meltdown, and we never will. Amen. 
That's what God will do when you become a giver. When we put this building, when we built this building, I did not go to the bank to get money. I called I call contractors. And when they finished, God paid them. Now, I'm, tell, now I'm telling you, I'm telling you, what I'm, telling you how, I'm telling you how it works. I'm telling you how it works. Why? Because, see, you, you, see you, you just can't say, I believe the Bible. You've got to prove you believe it. You remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They said, no, 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 God will take care of us. See, this is the right attitude. Watch this. I love it. Oh, gee, oh, God. The, 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 oh, the spirit of faith is amazing. They said, listen, God will deliver us. But even if he does not, I'm still not going to bow to that thing. Wow, I love it. I love it. God will protect me. He will take care of me. If he doesn't, I'm still not going to bow to the world. You see the attitude? See, see, that's a faith attitude. The faith attitude is to trust God. He alone is my protection. And you say that and you honor him. Do you know how well, how much God, when, when you, you know what heaven does when God hears you say stuff like that on the earth? Dear God, angels are bucking the line to come down here to do, take care of you. They bucking the line in heaven. They say, well, I'm next. No, 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 I want to go. I want to go. I want to go protect him. I want to go. Can I, can I go? Can I go? With that kind of an attitude. Do you, do you see what we're talking about here? But if I'm full of fear and full of arrogance and unbelief and, 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 and got my eyes on my flesh, now I've got a problem. And more of the church is that way than you know. They're arrogant, full of fear, full of flesh, and not full of God. And that's why you see, that's why the church is all, that's why the church is all, I, I, I weep, I almost weep, I weep when I see, when I see situations. Weep, God, uh, as, as powerful as the church is, why are we like this, God? Well, God's, well, I got to have a man that'll stand up and believe my word. <clears throat> and if I don't have a man to stand up and believe my word, I can, there's nothing I can do. And that's the truth. If you won't stand up, step out there on God's word and believe it, there's nothing he can do. Because he already told you what you allow on earth, that's what heaven will allow. If you allow fear, frustrations, and anger, and madness in the world to, to push in on you and to defeat you, heaven can do nothing about it. I won't allow it. Not with the word that I see before my eyes. No, I have redemption. And if I'm redeemed, that means the devil has nothing to do with me. I am none of his business. And so therefore, you know, going to see me standing around complaining about what the devil is doing. Come on, who do you belong to? Why would you complain about what the devil is doing? I don't care what he's doing. I'm not on my his property. You understand what we're talking? You don't understand what we're saying here? No, no. Stand up and act like who you really are. I'm God's son. I'm God's child. I believe God's word. I have redemption. And if I have redemption, that means I love, it's like I never went out there. I've been redeemed. Look at, look at, you know what? Listen, listen, watch this. What is redemption? Deliverance upon payment of ransom. The ransom has been paid. I don't have to stay out there. I'm, I'm, I'm home. I'm homebound. I'm at the house. I'm back at the house where I belong. With the Father. Hallelujah. With access to everything that's in the house. I said with access to everything that's in the Father's house. I just read it to you. All things that pertain to life and godliness has been given unto me. The prodigal son came home. The father said, bring the fatted calf. The oldest boy got all mad about it. He's the product of that stayed at home. You won't give me no goat. <laughs> what? You 
talk about a goat. Son, all that I have is yours. And he didn't know that. He didn't know that. Like some Christians I know. They didn't know that. But, you, but don't you see, don't you see how we can be, how ignorance can consume us? No. Understand that you have redemption, please. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. The grace, oh, that's another whole subject. The grace, oh, the grace. Go ahead, stand to your feet. This amazing grace, these, all these goodies that has been conferred and given unto me and no charge. Ha! And no charge. No charge. My dear friends, you're not trying to get redeemed. You have redemption. And it's through the blood of Jesus. Father, I pray for this people. I thank you for your word tonight. Your encouragement, Father, that you give unto us to stand and to be all that you call us to do. Yeah. Father, there's so many that are stumbling in the dark, yeah. and they don't know. But God, you have revealed yourself unto us, yeah. and we're ready to go tell them. Yeah. I thank you for the understanding that you've given unto us to know that we have redemption. Yeah. We have it, Father. Yeah. And we are to take what we have freely received and give it unto others. Yeah. To be kind to one another, yeah. tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as you, Father, in Christ have forgiven us. I thank you tonight. And I, oh God, we just love you. Oh God, we love you. And we appreciate you. We thank you so much for your goodness and for your grace. Oh God, your amazing grace. Oh, they that receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness to reign in life through Jesus Christ. God, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice. Oh, God, may it be a stirring in the heart of each of us to embrace the redemption that you've given unto us. For we have redemption through your blood, Jesus. We have the forgiveness of sin, and we go out to walk that out. I bless you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace and be blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God.